Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Benefits Cooldown. I'm Eric Silverman. That is still the one, the only Ed Legande. Ed, I got a question for you, man. I want to get right to it. Look, we are going fastly toward the end of Q2, second quarter, uh, which means Q3 and Q4 is going to start heavy planning uh, for the mass majority of companies under multiple thousands of lives for open enrollment. Um, and uh, what should we be thinking about? What should we be focusing on and discussing with our uh, HR employer group clients and or as an advisor broker? Uh, what should we be focused on? Another great question. It's really crazy how fast this year has been going by. It just kind of feels like it's a, a blink of an eye. But, uh, you know, for me, I feel like communication is still an aspect that becomes an afterthought after decisions are made, where I feel like, and, and this is what we've been doing recently, it's been working really, really well for us, is figuring out exactly what the communication campaign should be prior to decisions being even being made. So, you know, of course, what we're talking about is groups that are renewing in that, that third and fourth quarter uh, standpoint. So as we start the renewal process and you're benchmarking benefit plans for, for clients and, and looking at the, the, the cost strategies, the whole financial picture, the whole healthcare picture, perhaps we talk a little bit about when, when, we're, when we're discussing the ideas and the goals of the organization, where does communication fall into the mix? Of course, open enrollment needs to be one aspect of that, getting that on the calendar, talking about how many sessions, when and how, the ifs, the whats, um, but of course, figuring out the entire campaign, not only after decisions are made, but leading up to it as well. So it's not just some random communication you send to employees the second you make your, your particular decisions, right? You know, here's a brief example. We, we've had employers and, you know, we'll put our hands up and say, I think we've necessarily failed in this regard, where we wait until the decisions are made then tons of different decisions are being made at the same time. And then we're trying to figure out, okay, how in the world do we communicate this to, to employees? And especially as you know, we try to edge out of this pandemic, we've got employees working in so many different states and so many different areas. It's no longer as easy to just walk down the hallway and explain this uh, to employees anymore, right? So we need to be intentional in the way that we communicate. And so that's why I believe you know, it's really on us to, to help employers take hold of what they want to do from a communication standpoint and hold them to it too, by the way. Um, and so that once decisions are made, so if you are making changes or maybe you're not making any changes at all, it's just a lot easier of a delivery. Uh, and then, you know, that fourth quarter timeframe doesn't seem as, as crazy or as busy, at least, you know, with that particular client. Uh, yeah. again, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I mean, I, I often use the term and talk about it from a perspective of as an employer and even as an organization, as an advisor or broker, uh, we all have to be media companies in the year 2022. Uh, we have to be PR companies. We have to be marketing companies. Um, and people think I'm crazy, but you know, I'll spend uh, an hour or almost an hour talking about the journey which is so much more important than the destination. And the journey is the communication and an employee engagement strategy to actually get the end user, the true consumer of healthcare, to really be able to digest in bite-sized, easy ways uh, all that we're putting together for them on their behalf. Because at the end of the day, what's the point if nobody understands it, uses it, and um, it's certainly not going to help you attract and retain talent if that's the case. So, um, you know, I, I agree, man. We're spending so much time. Most average brokers, employers spend so much time and, and frankly, money putting together these benefits, uh, whether they're crazy innovation or whether it's status quo. It doesn't matter. They spend a ton of time and money and nobody really appreciates it. So uh, working backwards is an excellent strategy that, that I couldn't, uh, couldn't agree more with. So uh, spot on, man, spot on. Um, I tell you what, uh, we're running out of time. Let's uh, continue this topic uh, next week because I think there's a lot more we can unpack. Are you game? I'm game. Let's do it. All right. Well, there it is. We're going to have part two of this uh, incredible topic. It's the end of quarter two, start of quarter three coming very soon. Um, and what should HR, uh, business owners, um, and uh, advisors, brokers, consultants like us, what should we all be doing to prepare for Q3 and Q4? Uh, this week, we talked about being a media company. To sum it up, uh, next week, we may or may not have something similar to discuss. Tune in. We'll see you then. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, everybody.